Hey Arduino fans, in this video we're going to be talking about Adafruit's IR beam sensor. This is a lot like the, well it's not a lot like, it is the same thing that's in your garage door that's on the bottom that stops the door from going down if something's breaking the beam. So it has two parts to it, the emitter and the receiver. Let's take a look at a circuit that I've got wired up over here for this example. Um, I've got the emitter side, which is just positive and negative. It's just two wires going to the positive and negative on the breadboard. And then I'm, the receiver side has a third wire, so positive and negative with the red and black. But then I've got the additional signal wire that's headed over to pin input pin number six. Now, a fun thing to do with this is to look at the infrared light and a lot of cell phone cameras have the ability to detect the infrared light. Now, not all of them, but if I get this position just right, where it is, okay, there, oh, there it is. Yes, you guys can see the infrared light there uh, in the cell phone. And then if I were to disconnect the infrared light, the emitter side of this and try that again, and try to find it. All right, there's no purple light coming out of there. So your cell phone can actually detect some of that infrared light. They don't have the filter that blocks it. So this is the same technology that's used in remote controls for your television oftentimes. So if I plug that back in and see if I can go about this the right way. Um, there you go. There's that infrared light being broadcast out of the sensor one more time. So I've got the servo moving on this already, but let's uh, take it a little bit slower here and take a look at a real baby step program that gets this up and running and tests things out. So it's important that we set up the pin mode for that infrared beam sensor as an input, but also to activate the pull-up resistor. So that's going to bring that pin up to 5 volts when there's nothing present. Uh, the other part of the simple code is to start the serial monitor, serial begin, and then we're going to display the state of the digital read um, as it's running. So if I run this code and then run the serial monitor, give it a second to pop up there, try that one more time. Uh, right down at the bottom here, I'm seeing a bunch of ones, okay? Now, if I break the beam, that goes to zero, all right? So I'm getting, that's proof in the pudding that this thing is working. I'm getting zeros and ones as we break that sensor. So again, on the circuit, all I'm doing to break the sensor is interrupting it with something that blocks the light from getting from the emitter side over here to the receiver side. So pretty simple code. Now, Let's change that up a little bit. You still see that zero and one there. And let's add in a few more features. So in this series of videos, I've been working on using the PWM shield from the Adafruit. And in some previous videos, I was talking about how to get those PWM values to match the uh, one to two millisecond pulses, or in this case, you know, the other research was 154 to 2400 microseconds in order to get the right signals to run a servo motor. So we've got to include the libraries here in order to use that PWM shield. And incidentally, just uh, in case, this is the PWM shield that's pre-wired and set up here ready to go. Uh, and I've got a servo motor connected on pin number 12. Uh, same things here. My void setup, I'm telling it to start the serial monitor. Um, I've got a little bit in here about, you know, setting up PWM stuff related to the PWM begin and the PWM frequency. That should be around at 50 hertz for these servo motors. And then I've got an initialization here, but um, that infrared sensor is on pin number six, and it is an input pull-up, just like in the previous short and sweet code. 
And I do have that included in here, so you can kind of watch the status of that pin while this is working. But then here's an example code of how we can use that to use to have the servo start and stop or change its position based on the state of that sensor. So I've got an if digital read equals equals one, and that's not a typo, if you recall. This is a comparison operator. It's asking the question, uh, is it equal to zero? If you had a single equals in there, it would actually set the value to zero. Completely different thing. Look up comparison operators if you want to learn more about why there's a double equals sign on here. So if that um, sensor is blocked, we're going to get a zero. It was giving us a one when it was clear, but when it's blocked, it gives me a zero. I'm going to go ahead and run a message to the servo motor, which is hooked up on pin 12, and tell it to go, in this case, to a PWM signal of 300. You can always experiment with this to get it to go different places. And I'm waiting a little while uh, to give it time to actually get to that position. Now, this is going to continuously loop, and if that uh, infrared was not blocked, so it's clear, uh, that actually shouldn't say push button, it should say uh, IR beam is clear. Okay. Then we're going to tell it to go, uh, the servo motor on pin 12, to go to a different location. So let's go ahead and compile and run this. I can hear the servo motor zipping along. So let's take a look at the video side of the what's happening. Okay. So if something comes along and we're to block the servo, or I'm sorry, block the beam, the servo motor is going to move to a different position. So where this might have some use is if we had shorter items like this bolt, I could pass through and that's not going to interrupt the light. But if a taller item came through, as an example, then it would be blocked or deflected or, you know, whatever you guys want to come up with um, on this project. But that's just a quick demo on a combination of using the infrared beam to control a servo if it was blocked or not blocked. There we go. I hope this helps with your projects and good luck. We'll catch you guys later.